important people here so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> now what's most important is if you have your pistachio oh I don't have my pistachios that is true I should get Pam to bring me some of those I do have my beard comb though for my lusciously long beard so there's is, that core. is that to get rid of the crumbs <laughs> yeah exactly no it's uh it's getting pretty long, so it needs to be combed out every so often. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get some, get some uh, beard oil in there too. If it's getting that long. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, I, uh, my routine. I'm pretty uh, fanatical about my beard because it's my pride and joy. But my routine is uh, beard wash, and then beard oil, and then beard balm, and then I'm good to go for the day, bro. Beard balm. Oh yeah, yeah. That it just tightens up all the little strays at the end and just shapes it down into the hardy hedge you see before you. Hardy <laughs> <laughs> hedge. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Uh, who do we got? We got Core. We got Ivan. We got Conan. We got Zuzu. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. How are you guys doing today? Just woke up. <laughs> Just woke up. What time is it in Indonesia? It's nine. Nine a.m. or p.m. <laughs> nine a.m. Okay, gotcha. It's a.m. Not bad. Not bad. It's a pretty decently normal schedule. I I woke up this morning at well twelve thirty a.m. thinking that I slept past the war and I was in this mad panic. It was very traumatic first sixty seconds of waking up. I'm like scrambling for my phone, can't find my phone anywhere. I run to, into, I fell asleep on the couch watching a show with my wife. So I ran into the, the kitchen to see what the time it was. And I was, it was like 12.30 a.m. I was like, oh, shit, I still, got, I still got two and a half hours till war. Oh, that was close. That was close. Yeah, I went back to sleep for a couple hours or so and got up. And we smashed that war, right, guys? How about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. 30 minutes, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, we... Yeah, that was... Uh, there was not much resistance going on, so... <laughs> that was... <laughs> it was good. That's the way I like it. <laughs> Let's do that every yeah, war. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, uh... Let me just run through the trading house real quick, because I'll probably forget to do it here if I don't do it right now. What's that? What's what, what's that? What are you talking about? This weird thing at plus eight? What, what is that? War, yeah. This magical thing that you know when you when you fight other people. <laughs> something that. Jeez, your, your, my declare button must be broken or something. I think so, bro. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. We're we're still in the top ten. We haven't warred yet. Yeah, you're chilling, dude. Wars. Yeah, <laughs> we fought two wars and we're still not in the top ten. So there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh shoot, I forgot to do something. I need to change all this shit real quick. Give me one second, guys. I will be right back. I'm just streaming on Twitch and I forgot to change all the headings and all that shit. Okay. Let's see if that goes through. Oh, that's already 
you've done. Who cares what that says? Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Magic Fingers gracing us with those beloved fingers. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? Not much, bro. You sound sleepy. Oh, I wish I was sleepy, mate. <laughs> Actually, it's like midday or something? Or what is it there? 11 a.m.? Yeah, midday, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah midday. Yeah, Cork yeah. had an early morning by the sounds of it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys getting... You didn't get a war at Reset Plus 16 either, eh? Nah, doesn't look like it. Mm, too bad, too bad. One day. Maybe, uh, we'll just, maybe you'll uh, be able to fight we'll one, one day. We'll just keep taller, man. <laughs> yeah, just we'll keep, keep, keep going at it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's funny. Keep, keep getting those spec points, man. That's right. That's You're just farming spec points. Completing all... Pretty you guys should have all the quests done seems... after the first week of wars here, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, we've got heaps of time to do quests, man. So, hey, quest it up. Yeah, that's right, eh? That is right. May as well. Take the opportunity while you can. Sometimes they don't come up very often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, use up all that sweet, sweet stamina. <laughs> Anyone in Rogue that says they can't have, don't have time to get spec points is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, true. Very true, very <laughs> true. <laughs> Alright, here, I'll share. A full week. <laughs> yeah, I'll share on Discord to my screen so that we're all on the same page here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? This is even better. Here, I have a, a delicious treat. So you can see the hearty hedge, okay? Um, let me see if I can make this work, what I want to try and do. So I want to go like this. Then I want to full screen that. Then I want to go over here. Aha, I did it. There you go, join that stream. That's what you see on uh, on Twitch, if you're watching on Twitch too. Mm -hmm. uh, man, there's an elephant behind you, bro. There's an elephant behind me. <laughs> now that's just a glorious um, Tottenham Hotspur on that sign back there. This is my uh, <laughs> my comb I'm talking about there, Corkat. You gotta brush out that beard sometime, you know. Just keep it feeling fresh. Um. Okay. Anyway, let's do something. Let's do something useful. Okay, um, so, okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, today I just wanted to chat a little bit, I was hoping there'd be a few more people, because there's a lot of people that aren't getting their chests every day, as I found out, through Mr. Ivan, so thanks for speaking up, Ivan, um, but getting their COP chests still, which is not good, and then also just some general rock stuff that we can all work on. Um, so let's, uh, that's what the information kind of going back to the old style. Did I just get a dude? I just got someone there. Who did I just you got get? Elzara, I think. I got someone, didn't I? I uh, know I got the sergeant. I got the sergeant. Oh, the sergeant. Oh, damn. Yeah, you don't need a dupe for that, but I got him. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, so anyway, so what we're doing is, yeah, we're going to have a little information smash and then we'll just open up for questions like the good old days. Remember those days, guys? I think that was before your time, though, Zuzuna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so basically we'll just, uh, we'll just have everyone stay muted for the information smash unless I ask a question and then um, be like, yeah, 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. I'll just throw out my general tips about COP and um, uh, ROC and then we'll have a little chance to ask some questions and then yeah we'll see we'll see where the evening takes us all right sound good guys hey, man. sweet sweet sound okay. Plan. okay so Let's start with COP. So obviously, everyone knows by now, events, COP, Clash of Province, right? So it goes seven days of events. Um, day one is gathering day. Day two, build day. Day three is tech day. Day four is hero day. Day five is 
um, train troops day. And day six is usually kill event. And then day seven is free development. So you could pick any of the previous six days. Um, and so like it says on the screen there, we are obviously on day five coming up here. Um, actually, does it say that it's... No, it doesn't say there, but we are on day five. It's going to be trained troops. There it is right there. Clash of Province competition, trained troops. It'll say that under that little thing there. So that is what today is, which is day five of the week. And so we're just going to go through each day. I'll just give a brief overview of each day, a couple, couple seconds here on each day. They're pretty basic. And at this point, I'm sure most of us know it. But if you're still struggling to get your nine chests every single day or nine into 18, right, because of zone com, then basically these little things um, probably you're not doing, so this could help you, right? Um, okay, so day one, gathering day. Um, basically all you need to really do for gathering day is set it up the day before. So for instance, uh, an example would be, um, so if it's day seven, right, of the week before, the last day of the week, then you, you go to gather, and what you want to gather typically is iron, um, because you get the most points for iron. So you would, you would gather, you'd set your gathers. Usually a, a tip I do is I spread out my legions, so I would use my heroes and all my legions, and I would spread it out so that their capacity, this 5.2 million there, the capacity would then um, be roughly the same so that they're going to end all at the same time. Um, not a big deal because you can always bring them home early just to line up the um, COP ticket. But typically that's good because then you could have them run for, you know, like maybe a day even. Um, but, you know, to, uh, 10 to 20 to 24 hours, something like that. They all run for that the day before. And then you collect them on the gathering day. And then possibly you can get another one on the gathering day if you line it up properly. If you prep properly on that day seven, send them out at the beginning of day seven so that they end at reset or half hour after reset on the next day and then you can send them out again and that is easily going to get you all your chests um, the only thing to remember when you're doing that is to make sure that when you're bringing them home if you don't have royal prestige if you do have royal prestige just activate that then no problem but right before you bring them home pop your 100 percent ticket and then pop your gathering bonus which you can buy in in your alliance store there so pretty easy everyone with me still, gathering day, smash that out, no problem. Yeah. Sweet. The the the, the hardest part of gathering day. Oh, oh, look what we got here. Mr. Prime is sniping out my things. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so the hardest part about gathering day is to remember to prep it. Honestly, you get busy. I always get busy on day seven doing something with my legions or tiling or especially during RC tiling or something. And then, yeah, I kind of forget to prep it, which is a little bit annoying, but um, not, a, not a big deal. You can still manage to get them, um, typically, if you, if you kind of just run those, those little tricks there. Um, okay. Let me just turn down my music. Actually, I'm going to turn off my music because... I was just, I was just about to say that. You can hear music in the background. Yeah. Let me just turn it off here. Uh... Okay, there. Sweet. That better? Mm -hmm. Awesome, dude. Okay. All right. So that's gathering day. Pretty easy. Um, then the next day is build day, and same as gathering day. It's good to prep it. So, for instance, I would go into my castle. Uh, sorry, wrong button. Enter the town. And then, um, obviously, at this point, I think we all know that there's certain buildings that will give us more build points than others. But typically, anything that uses the, the crystal um, that you get from these, the um, yeah, these guys, this dragon crystal stuff. Um, and then any buildings that... Um, uh, what else? Yeah, those those buildings. And then, like, your, your, training, your training buildings, like your... Uh, um, your stable, your shooting range, and your barracks, those ones. Uh, typically outside of that, uh, obviously your castle is a good one to do, uh, prep on build day. But for instance, if I was prepping for build day, like it was coming up, actually I could probably start prepping now a few of my buildings. But um, yeah, the building that I need to get done is this one. 
So I would check it and go to upgrade 12 days. So yeah, I could definitely pop this right now. Um, I probably have all the resources I need in my bag. Yeah, maybe not marble. Yeah, I'd have to farm my farms for marble, but get the population up by just um, uh, upgrading my, upgrading those possibly, or just sending uh, a worker to refill my tavern there. Um, and then I would start that basically, you know, I could start that 12 days earlier if you're planning that far ahead, but um, just a, a few days early even works because you usually have typically you have those um, those speed ups right that you can run throughout the day and conjunction th those with uh, the hourlies so that it all works pretty well. But yeah, that that's basically it. So um, as you can see in my castle, I've put all my buildings that are worth stuff on build day up here. I mean, the, besides the red dragon there, that's pretty useless on build day. But these ones in the top right here of my my inside my castle are worth stuff on build day. Those are the ones I focus on. And then I, I'll upgrade the other ones maybe for some hourly chests during the week. But those are the ones I kind of focus on. Um, those ones that are also the workshops, those are also good too, like the uh, crystal workshops. Those will get you some good points. And you can check your points, as always, just into here. More information. Uh, you go down and you, uh, you just take the difference between the level you're at and the level you're upgrading to. And that's how many, um, how many thousand points you're going to get and then you times that by your your multipliers um besides that pretty basic build day is a pretty easy one also just kind of got to prep properly and you're probably good to go you don't even have to use too much speed ups if you prep properly um okay we're going to move on to the next day which is tech day also a very easy day if you do a little bit of prep um that's kind of the theme for this so if we go into our our tech so um Hopefully, like I was free to play except for the last probably month and I only spent really money on ROC. So still kind of free to play as far as the game goes um, and development goes. So you should hopefully be somewhere in close to this range right now if you're free to play and definitely if you're a spender where you have everything maxed. Um, you're close to T9s hopefully. Your accessory production is maxed and um, you're close to unlocking your Master Warfare and Master City Defense. But if you're not that close, that's that's okay too. And if Tech Day is a hard day for you, that's okay too because these tricks will will help you here. These tips here. So the two, the two that you want to start with is accessory production tree, and the uh, shit. Sorry, um, zone commemoration. And then once you've maxed zone commemoration, then zone conflict. And once you max that, then go into whatever specialty troop that you want to get to T nines first. Whatever you're focusing on, mine was calves there, so that's why it's maxed, and that's where you would use your courage medals for, because all of those trees give you a lot of points. Um, the other, the other one for points is in uh, the accessory production, and this one's a little bit easier actually to get your points because it doesn't take heavy resources. Uh, the the sorry, the hard to come by resources, which are courage medals, um, iron, and wood. Uh, for the most part, typically most of these take, um, I can't show you, but most of them take um, food and marble and then just uh, Dragonite. So that's why it's very important as a prep thing for tech days that you always have your Dragonite workshops burning up there. Um, sorry, producing producing that Dragonite. And you can check your Dragonite somewhere. They keep moving it around in here, but oh, there, there you go. Uh, so you can check how much Dragonite you have. And uh, as long as you're always producing that, it shouldn't be a problem. You On Tech Day, you, you'll be able to smash that out. So, yeah, uh, the other thing on Tech Day is there. And same for Build Day, actually. Sorry, I missed this on Build Days. Both of those days, they have an hourly. Um, on Build Day, it's hour number... Oh, shit, I forget the one on Build Day. I believe it's hour number two of the hourly quests. So, um... The hourly quests go in sets of eight, right? We know um, eight, eight hourly quests in a row, and then it repeats another the same ones in the next eight, and then does that three times. So basically, on build day, I th I believe it's hour two or hour three. I want to say it's hour three, and then on tech day, it's um, hour uh, seven, and it's basically the same kind of thing for both those ones. You get points for using your speed ups as well as completing buildings. So those are good good hours to really focus on those days to land, um, use your speed ups and get, get good points so that you can finish those ones. And then the speed ups don't count towards COP, but 
the um, obviously when you finish, it'll help you, help you finish the things, and then you're kind of getting getting some rewards with that, doing the hour at least too. So all good there so far. Everyone still with me? Sweet, sweet. We got uh, we got some people joined in. Thanks for being here, Metal and Yams. Thanks, guys. Um, morning, morning. Nice to see you guys too. Yep, yeah, morning, morning. Um, okay, so then that that's the tech day. So pretty basic. Like I said, if you if you kind of prep those two days, then it comes honestly, in my opinion, the easiest day of the week because you don't have to do any prep basically. Um, and that's Hero Day. So Hero Day, we just had it yesterday, and there's a couple different techniques I'm gonna talk about here. Based on where you're at, I would say that you should focus on one or the other based on where you're at. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is... Um, Before you start, one, one second. If I'm sorry to interrupt, really sorry to interrupt. Uh, I did it. First time ever MVP. <laughs> oh, COP. nice, bro. <laughs> ever. I saw a Lady Sith on there and I didn't check back. She tried. She you tried. you snuck I past her? I, I snuck past her in the last <laughs> half an hour. Dude, crushed it. The first time ever. That's wicked, bro. From what? From day one I've been trying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Well, we got some big spenders in the state, so that's congratulations, Metal. You nailed it. Yeah, first ever. Cheers, man. Yeah, good All job, right. brother. Um, so, go ahead, yep. So hero day is pretty, pretty simple. Like I said, there's no prep that really goes into it. Just saving your super tickets, um, uh, saving all your tickets would be a good thing if it's, if you're struggling to get your nine chests, but definitely saving your super tickets. So the first thing, um, first that I'll talk about here is obviously hero development day is to get your heroes better. Now in this game, uh, there's a couple thing, couple traps you can fall into is wasting resources to get more than three heroes good if you're free to play you really should focus on three heroes and maxing out those heroes completely and then just moving those three heroes around to each legion as you need to get stuff done for instance um my three heroes that i focused on were these ones north rage dual blades and hurricane and as you see if we click into them however i do that how do i do that again oh yeah down here if i click into them you can see that they're fully maxed right so that would be your first goal on hero day and obviously, I think we all know this by now, but you start with skill one, then skill six, um, and then so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter too terribly much by then. Um, but that's hero development. Um, not really important which way you go, but definitely do that as far as getting your COP chests. That should be your main focus because after you've done that, um, the reason why I, I would recommend doing that first instead of doing the second technique that I'll talk about, the the recycle technique, I'll call it, is because you want to be able to be competitive for different things in this game, um, ROC, KE, and if you don't have three, at least even three base orange heroes that are completely maxed at this stage in the game, it's going to be tough to really get in there, right? And really do, do you'll just be less effective than you could be at this stage. Um, and that's I, I think I was speaking with Ivan a little bit. He spread out his resources a bit, which is which isn't terrible, but it's just not it's just not as efficient as it could be. Because once you have those three done, then you can move those around to each legion, and then no problem, you can get all the all the stuff done. Like I tile with these three because they're my strongest three, so I just keep moving them around, and I don't really lose too many troops in zone four even. And uh, so that that's very very simple to do. Um, but the so with that in mind, that's what I would recommend anyone to do first, at least get three heroes maxed. Um, and then the, the other technique you could do on hero day, which is the one I do now, because I have those maxed, is you can just farm hourly chests and that'll inevitably get you your, your 918 chests kind of thing for COP. So farming hourly chests is very simple. You just um, do the recycle technique. So basically, um, I mean, actually I'll grab Core here because he has it down to like a science where it's very simple. Um, I, I do it a little bit different, but it's the same outcome. So Core, um, do you want to just share your thing on the recycle? Like you just do it one hero and then it completes one hourly chest all in one, right? 100%, sorry. Yeah, yeah the way I do it is um, 
I use it with purple hero okay. simply because it doesn't take as many skills that you need to open, so less um, hero XP tickets you need to use to get them to either level 12 or level 20, depending on how many skills you need to open. Um, so, yeah, I usually just go into there, make sure, obviously, you check that it is an hourly chest that is going to be beneficial for um, bending uh, wisdom medals. Yeah, um, and, and just on that note, there is, in your eight hours, there's two hours that are only super ticket hourly, so don't do it on that one is what the one he's talking about. Don't do this technique on I, those hourlies. Absolutely, because otherwise... It's, it's a waste. waste of time. <laughs> I mean, it'll go towards your COP, but it, it you might as well like double dip, triple dip kind of thing with this anyway. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, usually I just pick a uh, any sort of purple hero that I have. Uh, it works on blue or green too. Um, obviously, uh, with green ones, you need to open slightly more um, skills because you use less wisdom medals to max out those skills and be wisdom medals uh, used, you need to you know use a certain amount for that. Um, so that's why I use purple uh, first up because you only need to open skill two and skill three. Um, so usually per hour for those chests, you need about four million points, three point eight to four point two. It usually ranges to maybe that's because I'm C twenty five, but um, if you're lower, it might be slightly less, like you know, you know low threes or even late twos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so all I do is go, go in. I use some Hero XP tickets uh, that I have in my bag, which you get from every every hourly chest on um, Hero Development Day. Um, so usually 16 of the 5,000 um, uh, XP tickets that will get you to level 12, um, and then open skill two, open skill three, max out skill one, max out skill two, and then take if you're at 4 million, 4.2 million take skill three to level eight and then you'll get enough points to get um your hourly chest uh and then once you're finished with that you can go into any orange hero click on their fourth skill and in their fourth skill it says you use a um a purple hero a, a rare hero um and then you just go into there you, you scroll into it you just break it down you get back 80 percent of the resources that you put into it so you do lose you know maybe a couple of hundred uh was the medals um you know, I think it's about average is about for an aura, for a purple you lose about 250 uh, for, for doing that. Uh, for blue it's a slightly less. It's about 150 to 180. Green even less again. It's about 100. Um, just because you have to use uh, use less. Uh, so that's the way that I do it. Um, if you're talking just in you know how many wisdom medals do you need? Usually if I start the day at around. Um, 3,000. So obviously, again, this is if you're you know just starting out the game, this isn't going to be the best strategy for you. Um, and obviously, as well said, you know, get your you know base heroes that you need to run those legions maxed first before doing this. <clears throat> so do that, do that first. But I start with about 3,000 um, with the medals, and all that is from is just from um, exchanging my medals every day from the previous six days in the week. Um, so from Hero Development Day last week to this week. Um, and then I will change my um, hero, uh, my XP uh, tickets at the trading house, I think it is, or the arena, I think it is. Um, but just watch the hours because there is, I think, four hours where you get points towards your Clash of Province and also your hourly chests when you do that. So just be selective of what hours you, tra you, you trade them and you exchange them, I mean. Um, and then, yeah, you, you do that. And I just did it yesterday and I did um, about 18 hours of the 24. <clears throat> and the great thing about Hero Day is that every every hour has a teleport. Um, so you can really load up and, you know, bank, you know, even eight if you're, you know, doing a couple of triple dips um, and then just a couple of random ones here and there. You can easily get, you know, six to eight teleports um, you know, if you're doing it more hardcore like I do, you know, I can bank up to, you know, 16 to 20, um, which during our during ROC is huge because you jump around a lot uh, for tiling and that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the strategy I use for um, Hero Day. Wicked. Thank you, Core. Appreciate that, man. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. 
it's very basic there the the recycling technique once you get it then it's pretty straightforward and like you said you need a certain amount and that's what I that's what I meant by you can see that uh, you don't want to do this technique too early I believe because then you will slow down your progression of having a strong clash le uh, class legion and most importantly having a strong three heroes right so that you can at least move them around through your four legions and still have, you know, maybe your 500 demo in every legion, um, all that stuff you need for future events in the game, right? So, um, but yeah, like I'm at the same stage as core basically where I'm not maxing any more heroes anymore. And so I can just recycle and I think, I don't think I got as many hourlies done today. I was a little bit busy with some other stuff today, but I think I got 12 hourlies. Um, so that's 12 teleports plus the gems. That I got 12 uh, the, the gold chests on. So great way, especially during ROC, which we're in right now in 341, is that um, great way to farm hourlies and farm teleports because, yeah, you could go a war. I think the first two days of ROC, um, we had the one war and then we had a day of like tile, tile battling with um, ECL and also the rest of their state. Um, and I think I used, I think the final count was 57 teleports I used that day. And the only reason I had teleports is because I've been farming them ever since the end of last season, every hero day, pretty much. And so how many teleports am I at right now? I'm back up at 50, 26. Okay, I think I was down to like 15 or something. So I got, so I think I did, yeah, that means I did like 11 hourlies. And then plus all the gems too, which basically converts straight across to, to that. So that works great. Um, but yeah, definitely complete, do technique one first until you have the three, three heroes that are pretty strong. Those are going to be your main three heroes that you're going to be using for pretty much everything. Um, and then switch over to that other one just to farm hourlies and, and you, you should get your 18 chests. No problem with that technique. There's, you barely even have to use your, um, these ones. I bet your core doesn't even use his hundred percent class of province tickets on hero day at all. Um, but with that being said, the, the hourlies, how they work, how you could use your Clash of Provinces is um, every other hourly is everything, basically, for hero development. So all super tickets, um, uh, all wisdom, using of wisdom medals and exchanging of wisdom medals and hero XP. Um, so that is, every other hourly is that. Uh, those are the recommendations or uh, sorry, whatever they call them. What do they call them? The challenges and points. Those are the challenges and points every other hourly all day long. So it gives you many, many opportunities. That's why I find it's the easiest day to get three, right? And especially if you're using a couple of those techniques that we just talked about. Um, okay. I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Metal. Okay. So um, you said 3,000 uh, courage medals for the purple. Wisdom for medals? Green, I know it's about... Yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah, wisdom medals. Sorry. Yeah. So for green, I know it's thousand two hundred. Any idea what's it for blue? Uh, not sure. Not sure. Okay. It, uh, it, and it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't take you three thousand to do those um, first and second maxed out, and the third at um, eight, eight, like level eight. It doesn't take three thousand. It usually takes about uh, two on a purple. Uh, okay. On a blue, on a blue, it costs about. 50, 25% less, so about, yeah. 50, about 1,500. 1500 uh, for, but just to farm the hourlies, you'll need about 3,000 if you want to get like a ton of hourlies. Yeah, Great. because you'll oh, lose. Okay. Yeah, you, you lose, lose that 20%. You lose 20%, yeah. 20%, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, there's another thing I wanted to ask about. Now, um, okay, this is great for when you are a C25. However, on the farm, what's what's more efficient what's the most efficient way for generating gold with this method uh generating gold it, for the method on, on the farm yeah. did you say like on your farms is that what you're saying yeah 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 not not yeah on the farms because you've got a shit ton of uh, heroes on the farm right and you're just collecting yep. it these are yep. passive farms but i would like to generate more gold on my farms so that i can use it for my main this is an ideal way for doing that isn't it or this you is wouldn't recommend it. The, I, I would yeah, say it is, this right? is the only thing I do on my farms on Hero Day. I actually don't even go on my farms ah. until Hero Day. Okay. Uh, and so then, a great way. yeah, right, right. A and basically what I do on my farms is instead of getting like every hourly chest, I'll just get every other because then I can make sure that okay. I, if I log into my farms every other hour, 
then you're always on that hourly that's everything right so you sometimes your farm has 10 super tickets randomly so i'll pop that and right. anything you're doing with right. hero day on your farm counts that way and uh getting cop chests on your farms also generates some gold but also most importantly the hourlies right uh, if you get them on your farms and, right. and this right. is the, a super easy way because there's no loss because who cares if you have strong heroes on your farm yeah. right who cares at all exactly exactly yeah that's what i'm that's what i wanted to know so great way to collect gold and then for us to keep using it for the main okay yeah so, yeah exactly uh, oh, oh, last question is on the farm you do whatever is available you don't care green yeah <laughs> whatever you can yeah. do right yeah Pretty much, yeah that's okay. exactly right yeah yeah whatever is available just do yeah for sure sure. For, sure. for sure awesome good questions metal thanks for those um okay so that's hero day so let's move on to train troops day train troops day is another easy one because of the hourlies and how they match up all throughout the day Basically, Train Troop Day is has the most um, speed up hourlies of any other day. So they have a bunch of any time or any speed up items used, which is like this. And then they also have training speed ups one where it's only training. And then they have train troops for hours seven and eight. Um, so, or sorry, hour six and seven. And then hour eight is also another one, just like hour one and eight are the same. And then you have a bunch of training um, training speed up ones in the middle there. And then our six and seven is train troops. So basically the technique with that is, uh, that I use now, um, is just basically if I was trying to get my chest and this was the hourly right now, I, I would possibly pop a ticket um, depending, right? If you're gonna try a triple dip, um, cause training day, the other thing about training day is just like hero day, it's pretty much a triple dip is almost good anytime. The ideal one is obviously train troop, the two hourly six and seven, because then you can just pump out as many troops. But basically any of these are good because those speed ups you can pop out, um, just to even get purple. If you're not even going for gold, which it does take a lot of speed ups to get for gold. Just if you're doing the purple chess, you can pop out three or four of these just on speed ups, right? So then if you're doing that every hour, you know, or every other hour, then, you know, it, it shouldn't be a problem getting to your, your chess. Now, obviously something to keep in mind is your chess, um, let's just take a little gander how the state's doing, 110 million, nailing it, killing it. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. I'll, t I'll share a little tip about um, what we're trying to do as a state and how to also train some troops today, but avoid, um, avoid what's going to happen to that rag member um well probably nothing's going to happen to them but anyway that's just my biased opinion but yeah <laughs> okay um so uh, what i mean by that is um so uh yeah the the chest like the final count to get your ninth chest is a lot higher on train troop day because it, it's an easier day i think that they they've kind of weighted it that way um, but as long as you're doing that, you're, you're triple dipping with your, your, um, what are these called? Clash of province tickets, right? Um, pretty much whenever you're on, try and line it up for the last 15 minutes of an hour and then the next 15 minutes of the next hour. And then you can smash out two, two sets of either speed ups, or if you land on that six and seven hourly, then you can just smash a bunch of troops on those two and get two gold chests and um, be able to get points for COP too. So very easy that way. There's also no prep you need to do besides maybe just make sure that all of these are ready to pop through. Um, so like they're sitting here ready to, I can click on those when it gets to the right hourly for trained troops and I get points for COP and for that. Also, another thing that sometimes people forget, enhancing troops also gets you points. So if you go into your um, military university and if you're enhancing, like I, I will be enhancing a bunch of um, these guys today, these paladins into um, what I call 9.5s, but enhanced T9s. I'll put them into into 9.5s, and you also get points for that. And you can look at that. A little less points than you get, obviously, for training troops. But you can kind of look here. Um, at the top end, it's, it's pretty good still to... Oh, that's T10s, right? We don't have those yet. Um, but there's a, if you're enhanced one, one tier nine unit and you get 150 or as you, if you build one T9, you get double. So it's always good to produce a lot of troops on the day, but also don't forget to definitely run some enhances. And as you're enhancing though, that's a good way. If you don't, 
if you've got a ton of troops, in my opinion, you can never have too many troops. So I would always train troops along with enhancing. But the nice thing about enhancing is when you use your training speed ups, so that counts towards your hourlies too. So you can farm a few hourlies while you're enhancing troops too. Um, but yeah, besides that, training day is pretty simple. You know, it's it's very little prep. Just do these four buildings is all you got to focus on. Right, your military university, your stable, your shooting range, and your barracks. Um, okay, uh, so everyone still with me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next day is kill event. Uh, we're we're gonna skip over kill event because um, at at uh, well, I'll share a couple points, I guess. Um, it's just it, it's very the the other days are far more important in my mind. Um, simply for the fact that. Uh, if like the other days are easier to do it kill event there's many many factors that have to go right for you to do kill event in a proper way or you just need to trade points with someone in in your opposing in the state you're going against which that honestly is not a bad technique i don't like doing it early because early you need resources but now i don't really need a ton of resources i mean i i do need iron probably and and a little bit of wood and and stuff like that and gold obviously but but the hassle of having to like be online to do three hours of a freaking thing because every state we go against is completely shielded all that stuff it's kind of a hassle in my opinion so if you found someone in the opposing state the technique is very simple um basically one of you shields and one of you is unshielded you both yeah you're sorry the person that um you trade the points, you, all you do is you gather on a gathering plot and they, they come and gather on top of your legion and then you get you both get points, right? Because on kill event day, you get points for killing troops and also when your troops die too. So that's the, that's the way you can manage it. So if you wanted to reach out to someone, there's always people looking to do it that way because they don't have time, right? Kill event takes a lot of time, I find. Um, and the, the thing is it's high risk, high reward. Um, because like if you don't like it's the only day that takes like a skill if that makes sense every other day is prep basically and simple just math. have metal reinforce you and you're good <laughs> yeah there you go just find someone on your team that has t9s um enhanced I've with in, pretty I've, good i've i've been and i have done created a science man. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly that's another technique actually that's every, really good find I someone just everybody <laughs> Yep, find someone and be the bait. Exactly. Find someone on your team that is hella strong, like metal on ours, and just be the bait, sit there, and people will come hit you, and you'll get all your all your points and shit too, which is good. Very easy way to you do it. Really burn. Yep, you don't you don't really burn, and then it gives you a chance to hit back too if you're fast enough to port as they're marching at you, port, and then hit them. Then you maybe catch them while their legion's out, and you get resources. But if you're out on your own, it's pretty dangerous because anything you take could be gone in seconds, right? Seconds if a big boy C25 that has a buff, that is marching legion buff, he hits, he, he could drop beside you and hit you in, I think it's 0.5 seconds, basically. So good luck reacting to that, right? So definitely, um, it's a risky day, but it's not, it's not my favorite day either. Early on in the game, it's pretty fun, but uh, now at these stages where everyone's kind of big, it, ah, it's whatever. You sit there and figure something out with with a person in the other states probably the the best technique i i would give for that um but okay so that's kill day and then free development day is just repeat whatever day you're the best at honestly um that's what i would that's a simple advice i would give um i would try and stay away from tech day it's very resource intensive especially courage metal intensive and um that's the day that's probably the hardest as far as resources having up to do it double in in a week um, if you've got a lot of wisdom medals, do hero day. If you got, um, if you don't really have any resources, just do a gathering day. Like it just depends which day you find the easiest that you can get your nine chests because it's more important to get your nine chests than anything else with Clash of Provinces, right? Because getting your nine chests is is ridiculously good as far as progression goes and what you get. Oh shit! I keep clicking on random cast tab instead of event. Okay. Sorry, uh, Clash of Province. And then um, let's go look at the chests. So the nine chests, right? If, if you get zone calm done, then you get uh, two times nine. So you get 18 chests. But that ninth one is hella good. And that's where you want to end up because 
It has the most Courage Medal, so you get times two of that. The most gold, uh, you get another 100% Clash of Province ticket. Um, shit ton of training speed ups or whatever day you are, it'll be those speed ups. And then also the equipment pieces, which will help your legions be stronger. And then obviously the hero tokens too are pretty huge when you're trying to go for seasonal heroes, getting those duplicates. Um, so yeah, for day seven, honestly, pick your best day, whatever day you find easiest. During Reign of Chaos, I find training day, honestly, the easiest. It doesn't use any of your stamina. It doesn't require much prep. You need a lot of troops anyway, so just do that. That or Hero Day if you still got lots of Wisdom Medals because it ain't a bad... Because also, once again, Hero Day, very simple, right? Very straightforward both those days. Um, but yeah, that's our COP session. Um, everyone good on that? Yep. Sweet. Yeah, so just try out a few of those yep. things. If you're, I, I'm sure most of you are doing most of those things, but... Uh, I think, especially in our alliance at TTT, there is a lot of people still not getting all their COP chests every week. And mostly it's probably just a lack of planning. If I had to chalk it up to something, it's probably a lack of planning. Because once you... The thing, too, about this game is once you get some of these skills in place and some of these plannings, these techniques, it just becomes second nature. And then it's not so difficult. right? You just You don't even have to think about it. You just pop in at the right hours, boom, 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 get all your chests, and then you just carry on with whatever you're doing tiling doing whatever you're doing it just takes a very small window of time and get it down to really like 30 minutes you could smash out all nine if you lined it up properly um now that's not obviously great for farming hourlies but um yeah go ahead metal uh i, I correct me if i'm wrong but uh, when i was uh, you know c22 c23 uh, there were two things i wanted to mention here because i would stay at c22 if because since we have a lot of C22 still, mm -hmm. uh, I would stay at C22 as long as possible because there's okay. 30 million uh, for your COP chest, right? So you want to get your nine chests as much as possible. Yeah. So for your progression, yeah. So I would stay at C22 much longer before going to C23. I mean, I mean, you know, it feels great, but I made that mistake and I suffered because it was literally 30 million points more that I had to get to get my nine chests, which was, yeah. you know, more. T it made me struggle. Yeah. That, that's one point I wanted to make, which was uh, uh, very important because there's there's no difference, not much difference between C23 and C25. Right. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, uh, so not that's terribly. The one well. thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Okay, when it comes back to me, I'll let you know. Okay. But that was one. Um, it's on yeah, the same point. Though, yeah. The, but uh, yeah, to rift off of that, great points, Metal. To rift off of that, um, I believe the ideal and most efficient way, and I'll probably test it one day in another state if I want to try out this, but I, I believe it is this. Um, it doesn't apply to anyone in our lines because no one's at C19 anymore. But the best way to do it is to rush C19, finish Zone Com at C19 because you get all the buildings and all the tech and everything unlocked that is easy to finish. Finish Zone Com at C19, rush to C23, then you get all your super tickets, all your boxes, you get everything very easily at that point. Um, but going back to what Metal's point, because that doesn't apply to pretty much all of us here, uh, none of us are C19 anymore. And if you haven't maxed zone com yet, then you're probably in the range of, you know, 21 to 22 or even 23. I would hold at 22 just until you finish that zone com and then hop to 23. Because one thing happens at 23 as far as COP goes. Every time your state wins the day, you get, um, what are those things called, guys? You get more super tickets, yep. right? Actually, yeah, I can actually show you because I don't think I grabbed mine that are in the box here. Uh, yeah, so basically you get this, Victory and Clash of Provinces. So every uh, every day you win before C23, you get zero super tickets. You get advanced tickets, I think, right? And then at 23, right, right. you get possibly two. And then at 25, you get three. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, at 23, you definitely yeah. get some super tickets, right? And so yeah. that's the only thing. The perfect efficient way would be to max zone com at 19, then rush 23, hold at 23 for a little bit, catch a few things up, and then get to 25. So that you're farming super tickets, you're farming 19, 18 chests, and you're getting everything that you could possibly get out of it. Okay, so it's that way around. Yeah, that, that's ideal, but obviously if you didn't do that, you're probably somewhere in the middle, and I would stop at 22, just because, yeah, 22 to 23, 
the um, the ninth chest amount changes uh, by a good jump. 23 to 25, not so much. Right. Yeah. All clear, guys? Good? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. Is there any questions we have about COP at all before we move on to a couple? I'm just going to give you a couple general rock tips. I didn't want to be too long tonight. No questions about COP? Okay, sweet. Okay, so let's move on to rock. Uh, obviously, Rain of Chaos is the event that comes the next major event after Clash of Provinces. Um, it typically, yeah, I'm not even talking about the timeline. The devs put the timeline out nowadays, so just go to the Discord server for the developers, which is Rise of Empire Discord or some shit, um, and they'll, they'll put a timeline out for RRCs now. Um, before you had to guess, but now they got that going, so that's, that's pretty nice. Um, but basically, that's the next major event after Reign of Chaos, and you're supposed to, before Reign of Chaos st starts, you're supposed to have nailed down COP to a science. Because if you're still struggling with COP, when you're in Reign of Chaos, it becomes very difficult, and you will see your progression drop down dramatically. Because you won't be have the time to focus on COP as much. That should already be in the rearview mirror, and you're kind of just... It's automatic at that point. That's why it's so important to get these techniques down early. But when you get to Reign of Chaos, yeah, your time and your your thinking power and your your time in the game period and your stamina and your resources will be chewed up heavily by CO, or by Reign of Chaos. And so you might not be able to complete your chests anymore if you don't have the proper techniques down. Everyone with me on that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That was season one. Yep, that's season one, and still people are struggling in season two, they were, and then still some people are struggling with resources in season three. And what ends up happening 100% of the time, I promise you, is you'll start to not want to do Reign of Chaos as much, which is a tragedy, because that's literally the game for the rest of the game. Uh, Eden is pretty much Reign of Chaos, but a different version. But the, the techniques you learn in Reign of Chaos, the tiling and all that stuff... Um, you'll need that stuff for the rest of the game. So if you decide to put Reign of Chaos out of your your whole idea of the game just so you can progress on COP, it's the game's not going to be as fun and you'll eventually just probably quit or not be involved in your alliance and you'll get booted from your alliance because you're not participating in RC. There's lots of consequences and that's what I like most about this game is it's very progression-based. Every event builds on the next event and so as long as you master these techniques early then you won't get this burnout that happens to pretty much everyone in the game if they if they're not kind of focused on what their what their goals are um but let's move on to reign of chaos so obviously reign of chaos when you're in season oh, i remember the point by the way yep go ahead it was what you just said right now when you uh for cop right yeah uh Gathering day is very important because it helps you for the next day. It is a knock-on effect. Ooh, that's what yes. I to mention. Good call. Good call. Yeah, yeah. So that's very, yeah. I just remember when you said that, it came back to me. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, each day kind of builds on on each other, except for, of course, hero day. That's kind of one break day in there. But basically, like gathering day, if you gather the resources you need for build day, your build day will go easier. If you get your chests on build day, then your tech day will go easier and you'll have uh, proper proper resources for to do your tech and then if you do tech day properly you'll get your chest and you have the proper resources to do your train troops day right so that's a great point to put it's very progression based and build upon the last thing you did in this game um which sometimes is very frustrating if you want to take a break for like a week because <laughs> the problem is you're not only a week behind now you're probably two weeks behind everyone else that didn't take a break but yeah it is what it is right um, it's always good to take a break if you're, if, if the game is, this is my, this is what I will say to everyone. If, if you are getting frustrated by this game, by any, anything at all in this game, the events, bullies in your state, um, just being weak, uh, being not as strong, any fucking thing in this game that's frustrating you, just take a break for an entire day. Like just don't log in. And then come back refreshed and renewed. You know that's a pretty good, 
principle for many things in life, but it, especially in this game because it's very build upon, build upon, build upon. Sometimes you just get in this rut of negative thinking in this game and then it spews out into your alliance, it spews out into your state, and there's a lot of shit that goes haywire and a lot more people than you stop having fun in this game if you let that stuff carry on for too long. Um, so yeah, just take a break when you need it and uh, it'll, it'll all be okay. Um, okay, so no no more questions as far as COP goes. All good there? Uh, I've, I've, got, I've got a little one. Yeah, go ahead, folks. There's, there's one benefit with COP. Um, if you're trying to save on, save on shields and stuff like that, Mm. Uh, port to a different state that you're not with COP in on Saturday. Ah, uh, yes. Good call. Unless I like that someone one. finds you from that state, which is pretty rare, um, yeah, you're pretty safe. Yep, true. Especially... Um, you'll sit um, there without your shield on, and you'll actually probably you'll bait other people into attacking you, and they can't. Yes, yeah, they'll pour it over to you, and then all of a sudden they they'll can't hit you. They'll pour it over to you, and they'll scout you, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's exactly it. So good, good, good call folks. Cause actually that's a good point that I often forget. Um, yeah. So basically, um, to do well, that, you, you, rain of chaos, you, it? you need to be in reign of chaos. Yeah. Yes. Because then you it open up, yeah, chaos, you yeah. open up to eight other States you can go to just go to one that you're not warring against for COP and no one in that state can hit you and you're good to go as yep. far as yep. kill event goes and that stuff. It's also good to use, uh, say, if you have a friend in another state, mm -hmm. get them to port into your state, use them as a bait castle, and then you hit. You yeah, hit the yeah, them. that's a good one too. Yeah, I like that, that idea. It also works for saving teleports. Yeah, because yeah, they could port, and then they're sitting beside you, and yep. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's wonderful. That's that's great. That's great. Yeah, there's a few different strategies there that can be implemented. <laughs> uh oh, we have 108 million metal. Do you want to just uh, toss out a thing in Alliance chat there? And maybe even all mail? We have 108 million. That's not good for the first hour. Um, if you can Ooh, do that, bro, that, that, that would be great. Um, okay. Um, yeah, good good point, folks. Very good point. Um, very good yeah, technique just to a do. Tip, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely help you on kill event, especially if you're a little bit of a weaker castle. Um, and you're struggling yeah, with resources and have, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have heaps of ports, man. You know, yeah. you might be able to, you might be able to find someone in another state, right? And and say to them, hey, look, you know, use your port over here. And then after I've finished with my chest using you as bait, I'll port over there. You know, use two ports. Totally. One port each. Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm. I like that a lot. Good, good points. Good points, my dude. Um, okay. Good evening, man. Yep, thank you, thank you. All right, let's move on to Reign of Chaos. Just a couple little tips here. Uh, nothing too major that I'm going to talk about. Like I said, we're in Season 3. Most of us on this, yeah, pretty much everyone on this on this session here, this Q&A, is on Season 3. And so we're going to know these things, but just the little things to keep in mind. And sometimes the seasons are long, so we forget them. Um, so the first thing I wanted to share with Reign of Chaos is... So very important. Before you do anything, like when you log on and you're in Arena Chaos season, it does not kill you to do one quick thing. Go to your Alliance chat before you do anything. Go to your Alliance chat. Type, hey guys, are we focusing on something right now? Where can I help? Just a simple message like that. Your leaders will love you to death for that. Your other teammates will see that that's what they're supposed to be doing. And all of a sudden, instead of 20 people working hard for your 100-person alliance, you have maybe 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, hopefully. So that is the one major tip I would say to everyone is when it comes to Reign of Chaos, it is very team-based, and it's no longer... You shouldn't just be focusing on yourself only. Very, very team-based. COP is very just you get your chest kind of stuff, right? It's okay. The Alliance chest, they have that kind of team-based component to the COP, but it's super easy. Even if you're a small Alliance, you'll probably get all three of your Alliance chests. But COP, or sorry, Reign of Chaos, way more focused on working together as a team, and it's never a bad thing to do. Oh, shit. What do we got going on here? Did he get hit? Oh, fuck, he did get hit too. 
I don't think that's allowed metal. I'll bring it up probably in the thing, but anyway. Um, whatever. Uh, sorry. Um, but show me you at home, and I will give. I'll be putting a debuff on them because Stuart, no Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Hey, I'm putting a debuff on him. Okay, fine. Yeah, he's thanks. supposed to wait. Yeah, thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, very, very simple way to handle it right there. Um, oh, uh, one thing, sorry, before we move on to COP, what I was going to share about, if you're in a state that is trying to lose that week, there's a very easy way to at least still get three chests because your three chests will at least get you your super tickets, right? What you do is wait till the last set of hourlies. So the last eight hours of the day and then probably around the last two or three hours and just check the rankings. Obviously, if it's hella close, don't do this but it probably won't be as close as it is right now when we get to the end. But at the end of the day, just check that your state is well below the other state and then just go through the list and just make sure that um, the last 50 there, the top 50 is above whatever you're shooting for for your third chest. So as long as they were above 17.6 mil, which I probably can do this right now. Is that what I just saw? Oh, no, 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 we still got people, lots of people still that are doing it properly. Okay, there's just a few that obviously forgot, um, which is okay. This shit happens all the time. We don't need to be predators. We don't need to be intentionally mean to these people. We just need to help them so that we can work stronger as a state. Um, and so basically what I'm saying, though, is you can still get your three chests. I wouldn't really go too much past your three just in case randomly uh, happen to push push your state over their state, some weird thing happens. But get your three, because it's a very small amount that you're you're gonna be points you're gonna be scoring, which is only 17 million, and then that's not slowing down your progress too much. You're still getting your two super tickets for that day, and you get some hero, you get some courage medals, it's not the end of the world. You you get it, it's a technique to get a few and still kind of be united as a state and focus on the common goal of trying to stay out of the next um, next thing up. And just straightway, I'll tell you, for COP, don't avoid gold. Maybe avoid legend if you want. But if I was um, telling you what I believe is the proper way to play the game, just don't avoid anything. If you're strong enough, go. And then come back if you're weak. There you go. Anyway, but in um, 341, obviously, let's work as a team. Just it, It's most important to work as a team as your state because... Leading back into Reign of Chaos, if you're not united as a state, it becomes very hard for your state to have multiple people in the top 20, okay? And 341 is a perfect a, example of that. I have a quick question about, like, the last hour to get your, like, three chests or whatever. Yep. Uh, to get the super tickets, because so, I'm trying to do that on KE, but do I have to look out for, like, uh, Hell members or anyone else chasing me? just because I'm getting points or whatever? Um, so as far as 341 goes, I would just avoid doing it on KE at all um, because it's a, mm -hmm. it's a touchy situation. They're not supposed to be doing that, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I plan to go to, uh, like, the, to the other state that we're doing, uh, the class of province or whatever. Yeah, honestly, the best way to do it would probably be just to um, message someone, or you can even message me if you're looking for that, because I always have probably um, three to five people from the other state that message me as an alliance leader looking to see if anyone on my team wants to trade for points just to get their chest. So oh, I, yeah. I know particularly in this state, I just added four people to our Discord that are looking to trade chests tomorrow. Um, but like I said, once again, our state is pretty wild. So it's probably something you might just want to avoid altogether on KE day. Um, the other days, though, the last couple hours, it shouldn't be a, a problem, right? Like today, it'll be very simple. You know, just pop through one of your fucking things at the last hour of the day. As long as they're, you know, a few million, even a few, they'll probably be a G or two ahead of us at that point. And then it's all good. You don't have to worry about that. But but the, the I guess regardless of all those semantics, the thing is, is focus on your own development, focus on your alliance development, and then focus on the state. But the problem is, is if you don't focus on all of those at this, like as you're going, right? If you just stop at your alliance and don't help your state in a common goal, then you get into a situation of reign of chaos where 
no one in your state wants to help you and you don't feel like helping them. And that severely affects the rankings because purple tiles start to litter your entire state, as we saw in season two for 341. Right? So best to just work with your state as best you can. Obviously, you know, just, yeah, err on the side of caution when it comes to state stuff. Um, Everyone's just trying to play the game. Ultimately, I mean, I mean there's literally douchebags out there. Of course, every everywhere, every it's the internet too. So they think there's no literally no consequences to being fucking a, a douche. But um, just uh, do your best to work work as a team, work as a state kind of thing. Because the dividends for ROC now that I'm talking about ROC are going to be crazy good for your state, as we saw from um, state 334, right? They're able to clean us out way better because they're all united. They're able to win their wars a little bit easier because they're more united and focusing and helping each other. Guardian um, destroyer shouts don't get cast by the guardians in their states probably very often because they're all ready for that. But if that's if you have interstate bickering going on because of COP and earlier major events, then it's very difficult to build on that progress to lead into Reign of Chaos. Does that make sense, Ivan? Yep. Yeah. Um, Wait, why are we trying to use the first week or whatever? Is it just so we can go and like green light for the rest of the three weeks exactly. or whatever? To yeah, bingo, you got it. Yeah, best one to okay. lose is the first week because people don't know yet. Typically, a couple of reasons people don't know that you're trying to lose yet necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so you can catch them by surprise. And then also then you also have two other times that you can lose if you fuck it up the first week. And then... Sure. More importantly, if you do actually successfully lose, then you can just go ham for the next 14 days, right? No problem. Don't have to worry about anything. Okay. Oh, and then another quick question for, like, Hero Day. You know how there's, like, uh, during ROC, there's, like, uh, specialty training on, like, the tiles? Yep. Um, has anyone tried to see how much points you get when you do, like, a times five training during the time where you upgrade your heroes? Like, if you put all your green heroes in and then do, like, the train times five or whatever has anyone tried that out yet? oh no, i like see I, yeah yeah yeah. i see what you're saying like if you uh go into your strategy and then into special mm -hmm. training there yeah yeah, yeah. Or, yeah or just regular training like on your high level tiles yeah yeah <laughs> so um it's not a bad um especially during random chaos if you're maxed on tiles and you don't want to really if you don't have a lot of time it's not a bad idea to do that on hero day especially it's not a bad idea to do it any day because you get honor too right for your spec levels mm -hmm. as far as the super training you get a you get like a million right on a level 13 i'm on mm -hmm. a 13 right now but that also you have to spend some money to do that um and in my mm -hmm. opinion what is my opinion about this let me think on that for a second this is my opinion on that um, I, I don't think it's worth the money unless you happen to score the season hero that you've been waiting for forever and it's really going to boost your entire class legion up. For instance, if Metal scored an Immortal right now, I would recommend him to spend a little bit of money on the super training and max that Immortal bitch out immediately. Right? Mm -hmm. If he if he got all the duplicates and he's good exactly. to go, right? That's exactly what I'm doing. I, I wouldn't waste it on the base heroes because those guys will just be ready as like when they come. And if they're not 50 now, then it's probably because you haven't been focusing on maxing them. Um, but um, honestly, I've never had a problem at all ever in this game in any state I've played in with hero maxing ever as far as like level goes. That comes pretty easy. Like, for instance, a good example of this is I literally just got this dude um, on the weekend when I did Hero Day. I got Bleeding Steed, and he's already at level 40. And what I do is I just move him around, move him around and put him in as my main Legion is doing stuff. So he gets XP. So my heroes that are at 50, I toss him in with that Legion, and then he gets XP in everything they're doing. Just regular tiling, taking a marauder, taking a giant, all that stuff that you do with your legions, just toss the one in that you're trying to level up. And I've been doing that for the last eight months and I've never once needed to buy a pack of EXP or buy that special training. I think your money could be used better better somewhere else, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, well I was meaning just a regular training, not the, like the special training. 
Oh yeah, the regular. One. Yeah, just the regular one. Oh, sorry, the the regular one actually is, is not good. That that one you have to you have to spec into. But special training is. But there's two versions. There's the super training and the normal training of special training. Yeah, there's lots of words mm-hmm. here that I don't think they need to be having so many words here. Um, but yeah, so the normal training. Yeah, I mean, if you're like Ivan, I saw your legions, and um, there's a few that could. I I would just do this, but I would do it after you have like all mines. You know what I mean? Don't do this yeah. if you still have some empties because then you could have used that stamina to take tiles, which is also going to give you EXP and honor and then plus a tile. So you're getting three for one instead of just honor and XP, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's not bad once you get up there. And like I was doing this special training not for the EXP. I was doing it for the honor. But it wouldn't be bad if your heroes aren't maxed to do it for the EXP when you're at full capacity of mines kind of thing. Also, okay. another thing is when you have purples in the state, you know, you should be using a stamina for that instead of... Yes, that's because another thing. you're going to get thing. XP yep. from that as well. Yeah, you're going to get XP and then actually into my second tip. So, obviously, let's get back into Reign of Chaos here. Great questions, though, Ivan. Appreciate those questions. Uh, Reign of Chaos, the, the first tip was work with your team. Every time you come on, it, it takes two seconds, but it, it'll be life-changing for your leaders and for your team's progress. Just quickly message in Alliance Chat, hey... Where do you guys need me or what can I help with? Just something simple like that. Then your leaders don't have to track you down. They don't have to ping your castle and be like, hey, bud, can you come help over here? Like, they don't have to do any of that. You're just being proactive, which is always good as a team member. Um, But the second thing I was going to talk about is actually your 10,000 contributions. Now, this isn't really a big deal um, in the second and third season. First season, um, it's a little bit, you know, you need to focus on it much. But um, just for instance, like we're in season three and I've already got 13K of just season points. So let's talk about this because this becomes very confusing for some people, I think, sometimes. So you have your season points and you only get points there from tiling. Okay, that is from taking purples, taking um, non-purples. That's from tiling. All things to do with tiling, that is um, your season points. Okay. And so, like you can see, I'm easily over 10k points for my personal contributions to get to be eligible for whatever rewards we end up and get placed in as an alliance, right? So, but the technique here that I want to talk about, the little tip about this, is basically forget all that special training, forget everything, use your stamina 100% of the time for tiling, and you will be very high up on the list because I have literally spent no time anything else with any of my stamina besides some some days I'll do a giant um, or a white king I mean those are always good to do once a day but sometimes not um, depending on what you're trying to accomplish Um, but basically all my stamina for the entire um, week and a half or whatever we've had this season has all been that and if we go back into sorry now I'm just clicking random shit season tab alliance Intel. If we look at our team, we have a lot of people that are doing really well. Um, and if we look at the top season scores from only tiling, you'll see a significant difference in mine compared to others. That doesn't mean I'm better. That just means I focused on that, right? Um, just focused on using all my stamina for that. And the thing, the reason why I focus on that is because every time you take a tile, you get three things accomplished. You get hero exp. You get, um, actually, maybe even four things. You get honor for your specs. You get seasonal points, okay, for yourself, which go to your team because those season points is what accumulates to add up to 249,000 here, plus your war victories too. Um, But that will push you up outside of war. And then the fourth thing is every time you take a tile, you get some goodies, right? And those goodies add up pretty fast depending on how many tiles you take throughout the season. Uh, let's see what a level 13 goodies I got. So level 13, I get a few of that. That's pretty inconsequential, but your stone, right? If you're ever worrying about not having stone, every single time I take a tile, I get 60 stone, okay? Um, but like you can see, you get some XP. Obviously, these are maxed, and you get some honor. So basically, this page is very important, and that's why I think, that that's why I believe the most, the best use of your stamina and the best use of um, everything to do with ROC is to focus on tiling as much as possible because you, you'll get a lot accomplished with one click of a button. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And then, um, uh, and... yeah, go ahead, Ivan. Uh, what's the like priority tile in other states like after a war or go back and clean? What's... Like, um, so for that one, obviously, um, like it depends on what your leaders are trying to accomplish or what your alliance is trying to accomplish. Now, as far as TTT goes, because I'm probably you're probably wondering <laughs> for TTT because you're a TTT member, right? Um, the the best thing to do is um, okay. So sorry, ask your question again because I had the thought and then it kind of left me there. Ask your question again. I uh, just was wondering, like, what's uh, more priority, like, uh, keep tiling after the war or, like, in the enemy state or come back and ah, yes. clean purples? Perfect. Okay, so I believe it depends what your territory page looks like, okay? So, basically, if you look at my territory page, I'm pretty much maxed, completely maxed, okay? So, basically, after next war, there will be pretty much no point for me to tile in that state besides helping us for the next war, but... As far as progression of the season goes, it's best, I believe, to focus your stamina on purples first and then tile. But like I said, that, that question's pretty much like it depends where you're at, what you're trying to achieve as alliance. Is it the last couple wars? Like that's going to change as the season goes on. It will evolve and change. Um, but as of right this moment, um, in TTT, it is to, um, well, we're supposed to have cleaners. Um, it's not as cut and dry this season as it was in season one. But basically, everyone at war would be focusing on tiling in the other state with their next set of stamina after they're out for war. Sorry, and, excuse me. And then um, the the cleaners would just clean. But um, there's not as cut and dry this season. So just kind of play it by ear after every war. And kind of wait for, like, um, what I'm doing as the leader of TTT is I, I will always send out an all-mail after each war to say... You just look for the word like first priority and that's what you should focus your stamina on okay yeah makes sense okay another question sorry i got too many questions no all good bro this is exactly what this okay, is for okay so so i have like uh, two farms in like the one academy and one uh the ttd farm so and i have like five thousand points or seasonal points or whatever in roc mm -hmm. and so like if i switch them over like bring them over to the main alliance do those, do those points get reset somehow, or do I lose those points, or how does it work? Yeah, you'll go back to zero. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, no worries, because let me ask you a question now. What place mm -hmm. do you think um, the Academy or Farm Alliance is going to end up in? Top 40 or below top 40? Probably below. Right, so it doesn't matter how many points you have. Oh, so you don't get anything over there? You get nothing, unless you're top 40. All right. Or I kick two people out. <laughs> no, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but but seriously, though, Ivan, that's a good question, especially for TTT members, because we're trying to get more people's farms um, to do some stuff in the main alliance. Uh, because there are a lot of people that messaged me um, on our team right now that just are too busy for ROC. So we're just going to move them to the academy mm -hmm. and they'll try again kind of in, in next season kind of thing. So uh, we'll want to we'll want to stay at full capacity. So, yeah, just message me if you need a spot for your farms. Um, best is on Discord, but I suppose in the game would work too. Um, if I have it on Discord, I, I definitely won't forget about it. But um, yeah, message me and just say, hey, uh, could I get two farms into the main alliance and I'll make room for you. Because I'm just hanging on to those people in the main alliance that want to move until I have people to replace them with, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Excellent questions, bro. Good, good. It's been useful for you then, I guess, eh? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to get more wisdom medals because, like, after because I jump from 19 or 20 to 23, oh, and like nice. every day is pretty easy except the the hero day because like I just use all my wisdom, so like I think I spread them out too much. Yeah, but. like I said, for a free to play player, take um, hero day off of ROC. Um, as long as there's not mm -hmm. a purple epidemic that needs to be handled, but the thing is, hero day always pretty much um, is like three days before the no sorry not always pretty much it literally is three days before the next war so there's lots mm -hmm. of time to clean those purples potentially and um your progression like i said should not be stopped because of roc you know it's all, mm -hmm. all linear linear progression so you need to focus on your clp chest first so if you need to take off the entire day to hit marauders i would do so because if you think about it you can hit um 
40 level 15s, right? Um, yeah. And then if you had some gear to reduce that stamina, you could even hit more than that, right? Your that uh, mm -hmm. I'll show you on the stream, but that hat or whatever, the scavenger hat. Okay. Yeah, you know the one. I, I think you know the one I'm talking about, right? That little hat thing. Yeah, I just don't, I don't have it yet, but I know it. <laughs> yeah. So like I basically when I was farming Marauders on Hero Day, I would use that gold one. I got a gold one. I, I don't need that one anymore. But I got a gold one, and it reduces it by three thirty percent. So it uses seven instead of ten. So you can get a few more in a batch of eight. But you basically can um, do it three times on Hero Day. Forty mm -hmm. bare minimum, one hundred and twenty hits on Marauders. Right. Okay. So which gives you like hella points. So it's definitely worth doing if you're not getting that last chest because um, there's no technique to get more wisdom medals and um, super tickets besides spending money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way that they've equated it out, I believe the reason they put marauders in there and that you get points for marauders is to make it possible for free to play to get it early. Okay. Yeah. So which is kind of nice because lots of other games would just say fuck it. Spend more money if you want the shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that because everyone gets stamina, you know, just hit 120 level 15s and you'll be well on your way to the 9 chest for sure. And then plus okay. that'll help you with some EXP problems too for your heroes, right? So you'll get that, you'll yeah. get, um, you'll get some, some points for EXP, not a ton, um, cause it's pretty low gains for EXP, but, uh, you'll, every little bit helps when you're trying to get that last chest, right? Yeah. Sweet. Um, okay. Yeah, great question. Any other ones there, Ivan? Uh, probably it will come up. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> okay, sounds good, brother. Um, okay, so then, Reign of Chaos, the last point I wanted to say is um, war. Okay, so Reign of Chaos, war. Um, what was the point I wanted to make about this? I thought about... Oh, yes, I remember what it was now. The point I wanted to make about Reign of Chaos War and the, the tip, a trick I want I would I would share is the number one thing for myself um, is to work out within your own life and your own schedule which time works better for you. Reset or reset plus eight. Okay? And then inform your leaders of this. As you can tell already by the way I like to play this game is communication is very important to me. And because if you're trying to do teamwork in any kind of teamwork setting, whether it's a sports, a job, where there's more than one person involved, um, a relationship, a communication goes a long way to being successful in all of those things. And this game is not an exception, is not an exception to that. So communicate for your war. What time is best with your leaders? They'll probably ask you if they're on the ball, but just let them know. And then basically, um, they'll figure out how you can still be useful in some capacity um, if you can't be on for the main war time, right? So for instance, um, let's talk about ooh, Edwin. Edwin, hey Edwin, how you doing, brother? Um, his um, ideal war time would obviously be at reset because he's in California. So right around 7 p.m. is reset for him. And that is also my ideal war time because I'm in Canada. So it's 8 p.m. for me. And uh, for Edwin and myself, reset plus 8 is 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So not very ideal if I want to be correct. able to... Yeah, it's correct. correct. <laughs> yeah, right. Very, very tough, right, Edwin, to make that reset plus 8, right? Right. Right. So it, it's very tough, but if your leader, if you can communicate with your leaders about this and you can let them know what is your preferred time, then you can figure out a strategy to still be very, very, very useful for your team. Thus, the more people that are trying and useful for the team during ROC, the better shots you guys will have at finishing better. Because ultimately, the whole point of ROC. Um, besides learning the basic mechanics that'll be with you for the rest of the game at this point, for the next you know ten seasons or whatever they're at now, um, is the rewards. That's what everyone's kind of shooting for. And ideally, you know, first place would be the one that we're all trying to go for, which gives you guaranteed shots at getting season the next season heroes. So whatever season you're in, it would give you the next one. Massive resource bundles, which at this stage of the game isn't that crazy. The gems though is pretty sweet. And then the heroes and the gold, obviously, is pretty dope. 
Um, but all of it's pretty good depending on what stage stage of the game you're at. So that's the whole point. And if if you if you're not communicating as leaders and as teammates and and none of that, and you're just logging into your game, plugging away, and you're just kind of crossing your fingers that your team does well, well, your team's probably not going to do well. Okay, communication would be my number one thing for ROC is just communicate with your team as much as possible. I know you get busy with life, and yes, it's just a game and all that stuff, but just remember you're using your actual real-life hours to play this game, so it's no longer just a game, it is your life, if that makes sense. Right, if you could somehow become like a jump outside your body and use someone else's time to play the game, then yeah, you're right. It would solely be a game and nothing to do with your life. But we're all using our real time hours of our life to play, and it's always more enjoyable to win, isn't it, guys, than to lose? Maybe not. Maybe it's better to lose. Definitely. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> wait, maybe I'm just the only one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so communication would be the key. Um, and that's all I'm going to share. We'll do another Q and a, um, later, maybe next week. I'm going to see it probably, I'll probably do one every, every hero day, like or every train training day. Cause it's pretty chill. Um, just, uh, I'll give next one will be more tips about ROC. Um, th some war tips, some defending, some attacking tips, some pathing tips. We'll, we'll kind of dive in to just, uh, help, uh, whoever wants a little bit of help and a little bit of knowledge. All good, guys? Yeah. yeah all Sounds good. good. Sweet. Okay, thanks again, guys, for being here. Um, final final call for questions. Any questions that anyone has? Yeah, one question. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. He, he, he bitched off and went to the corner. <laughs> uh, you know, I just got to put the debuff on him because that's not allowed. He is not supposed oh, to burn just, him. Um, just, I think you can search for it, can't you? When you click on the debuff, can't you search for his name? Uh, okay, what's his... Regardless, it's, you get the name exactly Yeah, right. Stuart65G, I believe. Uh, let me let me double check. I'll get the name right now. Shit, I'm not in the state. Um, if, if you go in... If you're in the state and you go into, like, the Hell Alliance and click that ally, then you can pull up and find him in there. Ah, right, right. I think it's Stuart65G or I something, I want to say. Okay. Yeah, then you can just copy. Yep, just like we what we did for Hong Hong. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. Oh, that's his name, Hong Hong. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, makes sense, guys. Uh, no questions. All good. Hopefully, it was useful, helpful for you guys. Definitely yes. Sweet. Thousand percent. Yeah, we'll, we're gonna do. Um, It'll be pretty much the exact same thing at Reset Plus 8. That's if I don't fall asleep and never wake up again till tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I'll probably be awake because i got to get into rhythm of doing Reset Plus 8 again for war. Um, so I'll probably be awake for that. But um, yeah, um, so just like Zuzu, if there's any Indonesians that have some questions, I'll be, I'll be available at that and we'll kind of do this similar kind of format as today. Yeah, I'll tell them. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you guys. Zuzu, Metal, Ivan, Edwin, you guys are awesome. Thanks again, Core, for being here as always, brother. Appreciate your your input and your help, man. Yeah. No, oh, I'm good. Okay, guys. I'm going to go. I got to tackle some stuff. We'll we'll chat soon. Good night, War. Yeah. Good night, Edwin. Thanks again, brother. See you later. Yeah. See ya. Thanks, guys. All right, that's it. I don't think there's anyone here watching on Twitch, but there we go. We're here. We did it. Um, sweet. We'll end it there, and we'll have another one. The next one's going to be when? Uh, probably in, in seven days from now. Next next training day, we'll do another one just to kind of get some, get some more tips out there. But I'll upload this to YouTube, and so check it out there, too. Um, perfect. Stay fresh. Crush face.